Hello, and thank you for attending our presentation about the winter outlook for 2023-2024 um, with our discussion of our outlook and local expectations for most of Utah and Uinta County, Wyoming. My name is Christine Cruz, and I'm a lead meteorologist here at the National Weather Service in Salt Lake City, Utah. So first up, the official Climate Prediction Center winter outlook, and you can see both the seasonal temperature outlook for December, January, February 2023-2024, as well as the seasonal precipitation outlook. Looking at the temperature outlook, you can see most of Utah is in the equal chances of above, near, and below normal temperatures, meaning there's not a, really a signal to lean one way or the other. When you look at far northwestern Utah, you can see that the signal is tilting slightly towards above normal temperatures and those probabilities. When you look at the precipitation outlook, most of Utah is tilting slightly towards above normal precipitation. And we're going to go into why that is. But first, some good news about the drought. The drought outlook for winter 2023 to 2024 shows most of the state in no drought, which is good news, with just a little bit of the far eastern part of Utah near the Colorado line with persisting drought. So right now, an El Nino advisory is in effect. And you can see this bar graph on the left shows the forecast of other either El Nino and so neutral or La Nina conditions. And when you look through at least February, there's nearly a 100% chance that El Nino will continue. And it's also likely about a 90% probability that El Nino will continue through at least April. We start to get into late spring and summer, the probability of going towards maybe more Enso neutral increases, but that's something we're gonna to have to see as we go through the winter. Uh, El Nino episodes themselves are categories, categorized as weak, moderate, or strong based on the magnitude of the sea surface temperature anomalies in a portion of the Pacific. And right now we're looking at about a 75 to 85% chance of a strong El Nino, that highest category, with a 33% chance of an El Nino approaching the strongest on record. And that would be anomalies of 2 degrees C or more in that specific region of the Pacific. So what is El Nino? Here is an example of what the El Nino pattern looks like. And you can see there's a more active Pacific jet stream that goes across the southern tier of the United States and northern Mexico. There's low pressure across the Pacific Ocean. And then the northern tier of the United States tends towards warmer and drier conditions because that storm track is across the southern part of the United States. Um, El Nino is the opposite of La Nina, which is what we experienced last year and the winter before. So it tends to support this more active Pacific jet stream. And so for Utah, we have to see where that jet stream sets up and then also where that low pressure sets up. And that has a huge impact on whether where that wetter area, whether that's just Southern Utah or even Northern Arizona, or whether that spreads more into Central or even, nor or either, even Northern Utah. Um, for this year's El Nino, the combination of the intensity of these anomalies that it's in that strong category and several other teleconnections may suggest that the storm track may shift further north to include central and perhaps northern Utah. So one of the things I'm going to say a few times is every El Nino is different. When you look at that strong category for precipitation you can see that there is a strong signal of above normal precipitation in most of those events across portions of southern Utah, but some of these events go as far north as northern Utah. When you look at moderate, there's even more differences. There's one year in there where we are well below normal for precipitation for the, the winter period. When you look at temperature for the strong, you can see there's a couple of years in there, two to three years, where the entire state was below normal. And there's a couple years in there where it's a mixed bag or above normal. So this is just to show that every El Nino is different. And we really need to see where that jet stream and that low pressure area is set up as we go into November and December. This is another way of looking at the same information. And like we were talking about with that storm track, the strongest signal for above average precipitation is across southern Utah, with 50 to 70% of the 29 El Nino episodes featuring above normal precipitation. And across northern Utah, that number reduces. It's about 30 to 50 percent of those 29 El Nino episodes experiencing above normal precipitation. When you look at temperatures, again, as expected, the strongest signals across southern Utah with 50 to 70 percent of El Nino episodes featuring below normal temperatures. And across northern Utah, it's 50 to 70 percent experienced above normal temperatures. So what can we expect in Utah this winter? Here are four cities that we picked out to show 
that when you look at the temperature graphs on the top, it's generally equal chances of above, near, and below normal. There's just not a very strong signal in what we're seeing right now of the evolving pattern. But there is a signal that points towards a tilt towards above normal precipitation for all of these locations except Logan. You can see the numbers are still relatively close, but the odds are tilting in favor of above normal precipitation. So the main takeaway, we really have to closely watch this evolution of this winter pattern, where that storm track sets up, where that Pacific low sets up, because that will have a huge impact on what we'll see for this El Nino pattern. But one thing is clear, it's unlikely that Utah will experience another winter like the historic 2022-2023 winter. The other question, drought, water supply, and the winter outlook. And looking at this map, this is showing the percent of average over the period record for the soil moisture across these basins. This is averaged across each basin. And you can see that most basins are at, for Utah, are above 90%. What that means is that even if we're still a little bit dry into late October, early November, that higher soil moisture will allow a higher runoff efficiency when we melt off the snowpack from this winter next year. So that's good news. And again, snowpack is always the most important factor for evaluating drought and water supplies. So we're going to have to see how active this winter pattern is and see what kind of snowpack we end up with. But it's, again, it's unlikely Utah will experience another winter like last year, like 2022 to 2023. So if you have any questions, you can contact us through our email address through Twitter slash X, Facebook, or our phone number on here is a number that is staffed 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. Monday through Friday. So please reach out if you have any questions, and I hope that you found this information useful.